Alright, so I was checking my phone, you know, the other day, and a couple of things came on my feed, you know. First of all, Lana Rhodes' titties were there, Lana Rhodes' new baby feeding off her titties, Mia Khalifa titties, fucking all the titties in the world, right? But something came up that really, I looked at it and I was like, it's not titties, but it's pretty goddamn close to being as good. And one of the, what it actually ended up being was a mock trade of Jay Crowder to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I did some thinking. And if we're going to think about it real quick, Jay Crowder is the type of guy that not only is the missing piece for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but probably set puts them, you know, pushes them over from a round two competitor to potentially a final series in the future. And you might be like, well, Jay Crowder's not that good of a player. How can you say something like that? Realistically, the biggest need of the Cleveland Cavaliers is actually a dude that can guard the two to the four, a forward who can act like a wing, who can switch on, again, as I said, shooting guard all the way through power forward, do that effectively on the perimeter while also being a good three-point shooter. That is the only player that the Cleveland Cavaliers are probably missing that puts them into being a championship or so caliber team. It just so happens that the Phoenix Suns are reportedly looking to make veteran Jay Crowder available for trade and have been actively shopping him around throughout this offseason. Despite coming off a down year shooting the ball, the 32-year-old still has plenty to offer to a contending team. Crowder is still a serviceable defender and can provide toughness and floor spacing, which are great assets to utilize come playoff time. We put together three trade ideas to send Jay Crowder to a contending team, this and that. But one of the trades was actually a Cleveland Cavaliers move that has us sending Jetty Osmond, Dylan Windler, and a 2025 second round pick. Now, if you were the Cleveland Cavaliers, you were doing this in a heartbeat. You are 100% doing this in a heartbeat. The reason the Phoenix Suns would probably do it is because I do think they need to add some depth to their team. Uh, I think they lost some depth. Again, losing players like Javel and stuff didn't help. And, you know, just a couple other players here and there. It'd be nice to add some wing dudes to come off your bench. Jetty Osman would be a really cool guy. And Dylan Winner is a young dude still wanting to prove his, you know, prove himself in the NBA. But when it comes to the Cleveland Cavaliers, as I said earlier, the biggest need the Cavaliers have is a dude that can guard two to four that can also shoot threes at a very high volume. Again, we all know this. So many reporters and so many NBA experts have said, we really like what the Cleveland Cavaliers have to offer, but we're not going to say they're a contending team just yet. Due to the fact that who's going to guard LeBron come playoff time? Who's going to guard like a Tobias Harris, a, a, a um, Giannis, um, you know, all of those type of players, a Kawhi? Because you don't really think that Isaac Okoro can do it. He's six foot five, and in his career has been way better off guarding shooting guards. In fact, when Isaac Okoro plays on a player like LeBron, those players often go off for like 40. But when he plays on a dude like Bradley Beal, I think he kept Bradley Beal to under 10 points one game or something like that on terrible efficiency. Like, it's not like Bradley Beal just didn't shoot the ball. No. Isaac Okoro played on Bradley Beal and he went for like 2 from 15 or something. And Bradley Beal is a very quality player. He's even had great games against Donovan Mitchell and other players like that in the past. He's a dude that can absolutely kill a shooting guard who is shorter than him. Like, absolute do a number two. And that's why Isaac Okoro... Again, would be perfect to usually guard the shooting guard position. So again, it is a bit of an issue and it is a bit of a hole where the Cavs say, well, shit, who do we put on like LeBron if we can't put Isaac Okoro onto him, right? Then you've got the other issue you look at. Well, can we look to the bench? The other two dudes, there's Lamar Stevens, 6'7", and Karis LeVert, who I think is 6'6". Karis LeVert, we know, is more of a perimeter dude. He doesn't fare well against guys like LeBron and Tobias Harris and... Uh, again, those Giannis's, the Kawhi's, the Paul George's, the Jason Tatum's. It just doesn't work. Similar to Isaac Okoro. Lamar Stevens is the best out of the three in terms of guarding the small forward position. Because he's 6'7", dude, he's a bigger body, and he seems to be able to do it relatively nice. 
and it is a reason why some people have actually said he should probably start over Isaac Okoro come to the season. I disagree. I don't think Lamar Stevens is necessarily 100% that guy, even though he's one of my favorite players and I much prefer him over Isaac Okoro. I still feel like you need that guy. And it just so happens that Jay Crowder is sitting there up for trade and the Phoenix Suns want to, of course, bring in assets. Again, Jay Crowder. I believe he's actually not as tall as some people think. I think he is six foot seven or six foot six. I definitely know some people think he's like six nine. Yeah, I think he's listed at six six, but don't be surprised if he's actually six seven. He plays a lot like it. And then again, he's a dude that can really shoot the ball and even guard power forward. He's really tough, really gritty. And uh, yeah, he would be someone really awesome. I'd like to see at small forward. Now, would the Phoenix Suns only trade up a second round pick, Dylan Windler? You know, would they only want a second round pick, Dylan Windler and Jetty Osmond? Sorry. No, they're definitely going to be coming and asking for that 2024 first. I hope we don't give it to them. I definitely know that a lot of teams are going to go after Jay Crowder. But I don't think they're going to become successful for him, if that makes sense. I think the, the Cavaliers, they have a bunch of seconds. If you have to do two or three seconds to get the deal done, just do it. Because if you have a team, and let's get this started. Jay Crowder would start over Isaac Okoro for the time being. Okoro would start a lot of games throughout the years because a year because we know that players like Garland and Mitchell might have some injuries here and there, and touch wood that doesn't happen. Even the small forwards might, even Evan Mobley might, and a player like Jay Crowder or someone, or Lamar Stevens would have to play power forward for that game. So Okoro would still start a fair bit of the year, you would assume. But again, starting five would look like Garland, Mitchell, Jay Crowder at the three now, or Mobley at the four, and then Allen at the five. Then off the bench, you're looking at Kevin Love as six man, you know, Ricky Rubio as your seventh, eighth man is Karis freaking Levert. Isaac Okoro as your ninth man. Like, imagine having Isaac Okoro as your ninth man. That's pretty goddamn sexy. And then you've got Lamar Stevens as your 10th, Dean Wade as your 11th, Raul Neto as, like, your 12th, Robin Lopez as your 13th, and then as your 14th, you've got the other Mobley, bro. Like, Jesus Christ, that team is stacked. Like, sit on my face, Kobe Altman. Lots of homo for making this team. It's beautiful. I mean, yeah. But that's only if you can get Jay Crowder. If he doesn't, again... Jetty Osman and Dylan Windler would go back to being the 13th and 14th man or whatever it may be. But I just I just think Jay Crowd is ultimately the missing piece. Like he is the dude that will legitimately send you to being, I think, the team that could make the conference finals but also make the finals. I mean, what does that starting five not have? You're gonna be like, oh, what about three-point shooting? Oh, well, it just so happens that Darius Garland. Donovan Mitchell and Jay Crowder are like 40% three-point shooters when they're at their best. What about perimeter defense? Oh, well, we still got Mobley, who's an absolute G when it comes to going out there. Jay Crowder's an elite perimeter defender. Jarrett Allen is still a great perimeter defender for his size, which is pretty crazy to think. And then I think Garland and Mitchell can work it out. you still got a core on Rubio off the bench and Levert to help out with the perimeter defense at the guard situation. And then again, Lamar Stevens is still right there. Like, you look at that shot creation, oh well, you just got Darius Garland and, you know, Donovan Mitchell, the two of the best shot creating guards in the league, plus Evan Mobley should take a step forward this year. The starting five has everything except maybe defense of the guards, but as I think a lot of people are saying, the shot creation is going to outweigh the defense of that guard positions anyway. I'm saying the Cavaliers should go after Jay Crowder. Will they do it? I don't think so, but he is the missing piece in my eyes. I think if they can get him... Jesus Christ, that defense is... Again, it goes up way more because Asuka Corey, he doesn't have the three-point shooting, doesn't have the interior D, he's just got the perimeter. Again, you bring in a dude that not only has the perimeter, but can help out in the interior against those bigger forwards. And he can shoot threes really effectively, Jay Crowder can. So, yeah, I think it should happen. Cavs, do it. Get the deal done. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest NBA news and NBA content. Of course, don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you guys think the Cleveland Cavaliers should, of course, be trading for a guy like Jay Crowder, or do you guys think they shouldn't? Is he the missing piece? Definitely let me know your thoughts and opinions. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.